Thank you for tuning in. I ask that you please subscribe to my channel and you can catch my future painting tutorials as well. The painting we're going to be working on is called Wild Wilderness. It's an acrylic and oil painting. And I'm going to show you how I put this together piece by piece. I love uh, nature. Nature is um, it's, it's full of possibilities, it's full of beauty, and uh, our Lord uh, is the ultimate artist and uh, has given us an enormous amount of things uh, that we can work with based on, based on painting, just based on observation. And uh, he's created a, a beautiful world around us, and uh, I just enjoy trying to capture that the best I can. And uh, one of those, obviously, is, is, is nature. And uh, nature's a lot of fun to, to paint. Um, and so I'm just putting this together now. I've thrown a little bit of, um, a little bit of, uh, of blue. Um, it's kind of a, a light ultramarine blue and then brought in a little bit of a white acrylic airbrush paint um, kind of at the base just to kind of lighten that up a little bit and uh, I'm gonna work on this large mountain here in the back wanted to make this look really distant so just using very cool um, kind of blue gray tones with a little bit of purple mixed in uh, to try to achieve this and uh, always the rule of thumb is that anything that's kind of off in the distance for that illusion you want to mainly just stick to those cool colors um, typically those those very uh, those very soft light gray tones blues purples um, little uh, soft umbers any of those colors can achieve that. As, as we move into the foreground, you'd uh, kind of switch over to more um, warm colors. So uh, using more of your reds, oranges, your yellows, um, your crimsons, and uh, burnt sienna, which is a kind of a, a reddish or more of an orangish uh, brown tone and and that's what you kind of want to use kind of moving into the uh, into the foreground so I'm just kind of creating some basic patterns here I'm kind of scumbling on uh, but but not haphazardly this is kind of uh, deliberate but uh, creating some some random brush strokes here I'm using a very small fine I believe this is my 18 over zero brush, a little round brush, round head, and um, just kind of creating the illusion of some of some rock formations here, and making sure that to look check my negative space because I do not want to kill that nice uh, gray underpainting. I'm gonna add in some basic uh, um, snow. I've just mixed uh, yellow and white together here um, with a little bit of a uh, little bit of gray mixed in and just kind of lay that in real quickly and, and as I move into more of the shadowy regions I'm adding a little more ultramarine blue to that to accomplish that and kind of just dancing around here and and using um, using my reference photo had a reference photo of a of this snowy uh, cliff here, and um, and so just kind of using as a as a very loose basic reference as I kind of add the, this thing on and, and kind of add a couple of my own a couple of my own little um, strokes here to <clears throat> to kind of make it my own, so it's not completely. Um, copied but uh, nonetheless trying to kind of stay true to that to that reference photo 
So now I'm coming back with um, <clears throat> that same kind of umber and, and um, burnt sienna mixture, but adding a little bit more orange now. And I wanted to just come in here and kind of bring in a little bit more highlights um, as the sun is, is sort of casting um, its glow here onto, onto this mountain. <clears throat> I also wanted to create some contrast with the shadow portion of, or the shadowy side of this mountain. And, and bringing in these warmer, uh, brighter colors will help to uh, really cause those, shadow, those shadows to, uh, to really come out a little bit more. So as I said, um, Nature is a wonderful reference, uh, and, and and the Lord is uh, definitely the uh, ultimate artist. Um, so it's it's always a lot of fun to uh, get out into nature and enjoy nature, and um, and really just take it all in and, and feel the uh, the emotion of it and the spirit of it. Um, really, kind of fill, fills my soul. And so I really very much value the outdoors. Um, I, I really don't spend a lot of time painting a lot of nature scenes. I, I really like to really mix it up and, and, and uh, just try my hand at all sorts of things from, from obviously nature scenes, um, seascapes, mountainscapes. Um, I love to do architecture so I'll do cabins and castles um, recently did a, a chapel those are always fun too um, I also like to um, paint paint a lot of portraits uh, which is always uh, it's kind of a different style and approach to to painting uh, which really requires a lot more attention to detail and kind of slowing things down a little more um, and I and I enjoy doing uh, fantasy paintings and um, so there's just it's unlimited it's it's kind of a limitless um, opportunity to to paint all sorts of, of things and I like to try all of that but it's nice to kind of step away sometimes and come back and and uh, continue to hone my skills with with doing nature scenes as well uh, sometimes the brushes required are a little different the, the way they're used. The pressure applied on those brushes, the amount of paint on those brushes, the angle and use of those brushes, they a lot of times can be just a different approach. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I know there's some artists, they just very much focus on one genre, um, and that's just never been my style. But... Uh, I would encourage anybody, even if you enjoy a specific, specific uh, genre, that definitely continue to try all sorts of varieties of, of types and styles of paintings, and keep keep practicing and improving, and and uh, you, you'll learn so very much just by being a little more, um, just just a little more experimental. Um, as, as you do that, I spend a lot of time watching uh, YouTube videos, different artists, watching their technique, reading, uh, just really become a student of the craft uh, would be my best advice. So as we're moving a little bit more now into the foreground, I'm making my colors a little, a little darker, a little bolder, um, a little warmer. And again, that'll just help to, to add to kind of bringing forth just another plane, really. Um, a whole new value. And uh, this particular painting has, I don't know, maybe three or four values to it, uh, if, I, if I counted. And, um, but I, I think it's just, I love creating depth. Uh, in a painting, I love creating illusion, um, but that can only be achieved through the 
uh, the colors you're using, um, obviously cool colors versus warm colors, um, and then creating uh, kind of haziness to clarity, blurry to, to uh, clear. Any one of those things can really help to start adding to uh, the, that value system and pushing things either back in the distance or or bringing them forward and to the foreground. All right, so this is all acrylic right now that I've been laying in. So um, this is really mostly just an underpainting still. Uh, um, I'll come back with some oils later and and over, overlay that. For the most part, though, it's 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 mostly all laid in in acrylic. Let that dry, then I can come back and I can keep working this. Um, without having to wait a long time and that's why I, I really like to to bring in acrylic first and, uh, and, and really take advantage of the the shorter dry periods uh, before I can uh, start laying in um, paint on top of paint so so it's nice to come at the very end with my my uh, oil palette and um, I like to use fast drying oils I use alkyd oils um, I usually have about a good four or five hours of workability uh, with those types of paints before they really start to dry, just like an acrylic really quickly. So, But um, I can keep producing and working my, my painting without having to wait weeks and weeks uh, to go back. And I just don't have the, the patience uh, for that. And if I'm working a, a commission piece, I don't want the client to have to wait that long either so so this uh, this method wor really uh, works for me all right so I wanted to create here in the in the very far distance um, just some sun glow uh, kind of sparkling on the distant pond here in the background and and really for me it's just I'm tr trying to figure things out lay things in um, and, and really kind of think deliberately about my composition here. So uh, I will go over um, some of the uh, brush strokes that I've I've laid in, just because um, right now for me it's really just figuring out where things kind of live, um, specifically in the water region. I'll I'll be going back over that again, and uh, just readjusting my my composition a little bit and my brush strokes. Laying all this in in, in uh, carbon black, getting that all kind of blocked in really quickly here. Um, and this will just become a, a nice dense forest of trees uh, here. And I'm using my very small little fan brush, um, which I get a lot of good uh, control uh, into that in, in creating these, these large pine trees. Um, but the idea with this composition is really leading the eye to the center of the painting, leading it to uh, toward that mountain and, and leading it toward that, that bright sun glow in the middle. So as I angle my uh, stand of trees kind of, kind of inward uh, toward the center, um, all this is designed to kind of lead the eye more to the center of the painting in this composition. And, and also these large trees can serve as eye stoppers. So it really kind of, it really kind of pulls the eye more toward the center just by having these eye stoppers on the side here. And these are just some things that you can do as an artist that uh, you can sort of, for lack of a better word, manipulate uh, the viewer um, you can kind of lead them subtly um, to where you want to lead them, you know, and and you can you can help uh, kind of draw that eye to certain sections of the painting, um, and you have that control and that power, and it's all done through your composition and through uh, kind of where you lay things, how the angle in which you lay them in, uh, all those things will. There's, there's a whole psychology really behind behind this. You know, it's the same psychology that you use in the retail market. Uh, you know, retail stores, they, they manipulate, honestly. 
Um, they put some of the anchor products, uh, you know, your, your milks, your breads, your eggs, the, the, the number one things that are that most people always have on their shopping list, they're going to put those in the back of the store. And the reason they do that a lot of times is they want to force the shopper to walk the distance from the front to the back of the store in the hopes that you're going to you're going to impulse buy uh, certain products along the way that you weren't even planning on doing. And so artists very similar, you know, and in a lot of ways you can use that psychology um, in your painting and in your composition to kind of lead the viewer where you want to lead them. And uh, hopefully uh, along the way as they're, as they're viewing and taking everything in, you know, they're going to, uh, they're going to discover other things about the, the, uh, the piece of work. So, so you have that control and that power if you use it properly. So now I'm just kind of laying in now this, um, I wanted some reflection here and, um, you know, we'll continue to kind of work that a little bit, but uh, right now it's just going in and starting to lay in some of the detail of these trees. Um, I'm using a lot of, of my sap green and, and ultramarine blue, um, mixing those together, creating a really kind of a bluish green. That'll be more of my shadow leafing um, on the cooler side uh, of, of kind of the shadowed side of these uh, thick, dense stand of trees and really wanted to get that sun glow coming on the right side of the painting. So um, for that I'm using a, a gold a gold green uh, mixed with a little bit of sap and a little bit of cad yellow and um, and that's really how I'm kind of laying in that that uh, brighter color. But again, you really want to think about your brush strokes here. You really want to skip around and and allow a lot of that dark underpainting to show through. Uh, half the battle is is really won just by um, really really using the the uh, underpainting to your advantage, and then uh, you can create some some subtle shapes uh, just through a few simple brush strokes that really um, that really kind of give the illusion that uh, you've got a, a, a complete um, object uh, there and in this case that'd be the uh, you know that'd be these pine trees so <clears throat> but still thinking about um, you know, this composition and how I want to bring it in and bring in these rocks and, uh, you know, just really thinking about uh, where everything is going to live and, and um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of thought that go to go into these paintings uh, for sure and, and uh, I like to uh, definitely take my time with the composition. Now I've used my airbrush again. I, I wanted to have this this kind of I don't know maybe a sun glow that uh, like a, like a shaft of light that's kind of bursting between the uh, these trees and then striking the water. So I've used um, titanium white and uh, and yellow uh, for my two colors in my airbrush. It's, it's a, an acrylic airbrush, so these are acrylic paints as well. Uh, but I wanted to create that, that quick glow um, here. And then I've also kind of sprayed a little bit of a, a bluish or a pale blue color in my in, with my airbrush too to push some of the trees kind of a little bit into the distance that I can create some layering and, and put bringing in some darker tree formations kind of in front of that. That way it really gives the illusion that um, you've got a nice thick uh, dense uh, stand of trees here that's creating this this forest. And, um, and just kind of really thinking about setting the stage for uh, my next round of 
of sun rays that I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, paint in here in just a second. But so uh, this is to be, you know, an early, uh, kind of an early morning um, painting and the sun's just kind of starting to really creep up into the sky and it's pretty low on the horizon so it's really kind of bursting through the tree line. It's kind of the effect that I really wanted to bring in here. So this is me now just taking a very, just a very little, very, very little paint on the brush, but a nice soft bristle brush and creating these, these kind of straight lines. Um, and, um, you know, really just kind of dry brush uh, skimming these on. You really want to uh, still have a lot of that underpainting coming through. So kind of gives that illusion that this is just some sun rays um, that are coming through here. But the best way to achieve that is through just very little paint on the brush. Matter of fact, I usually wipe a lot of it off after I apply it, you know, either on my dabble board or a paper towel. And then I'll just start skimming and uh, building that up a little bit at a time. So now it's just kind of uh, going through and refining a little bit. I wanted to have some some fallen logs here that uh, you know at one point or another might have fallen into the water after they fell off. Um, you know some of these trees might have fallen over through age and and um, and maybe just kind of washed up over time, washed up from the uh, from this little uh, river here, and um, kind of settled there on the bank. Bring in a couple little birds here, and I've already blocked in the bear. Um, I will go back and tweak the leg, the back leg of one of these bears. I I really didn't like it quite so much, and uh, to me, it kind of almost looked like a um, more of a of a wolf leg, honestly. So I, I'll go back later and I'll kind of change that up. But uh, right now, basically, I've just blocked it in with a carbon black, and um, and then once that dried, I can come through and kind of start to, I don't know, dapple on, I suppose, little little hairs little fur uh, around around um, the bear and but I wanted to keep it pretty pretty dark um, a lot of a lot of uh, silver lining really I suppose because I wanted to get some of those sun rays kind of hitting uh, the, the top uh, head and, and back of the bear and kind of kind of around the, mu the muzzle and so forth but um, didn't need to put a whole lot of detail to this, just enough to give that that illusion um, that that these are these are some bears, and it's a mom bear and a baby bear cub, uh, kind of crossing the stream uh, here early in the morning. Maybe they're out hunting for uh, some fish or or for some berries, and and so they're just kind of looking for their 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 breakfast in the morning. And, have the little the little baby cub here in the in the back. So so really just kind of a again think about negative space. Think about the underpainting. Try to use a lot of it um, and kind of build around it a little bit at a time. And, and that'll work. That'll work its way out. I didn't show the complete painting of the bears. Matter of fact, uh, some of my video. Just didn't turn out well. I think I lost focus, so I had to remove um, a lot of that as well. Now we're going to have a little reflection from those rays kind of in the water as well. I wanted to make sure that I was capturing that uh, as well as I, I think I'd see maybe a little bit of reflection of those sun rays. And I'm coming back with a, with oil paint now, and I'm applying this really thick and. Uh, and I really wanted to get some texture here, and, and I really wanted to start to bring out a little bit more uh, brightness uh, to that side of the uh, of the trees. That uh, the the sun, the early morning sunshine is is really kind of hitting that side of of this forest. 
So just taking my time with my little palette knife and, and just dotting this on nice, tiny little thick uh, gobs of paint that will kind of uh, begin that illusion of individual leafing uh, of these pine needles. And um, you know, we're coming to the end of the video now and, and I certainly appreciate you uh, watching. Uh, please subscribe if you've not done so already. I certainly appreciate your comments and uh, your ideas for future paintings. I sometimes take those comments and create new content, so I'm always happy to, to take your suggestions. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in, and um, until next time, um, I'll be producing something new to, to view. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.